All right, let's go ahead and get underway. So again, today um, we're going to be focusing our conversation on how to build really great um, and engaging content within ActivePipe. Uh, so today's session is largely going to sit around building out that stuff here and some of the tools that you have at your disposal um, and an exciting new announcement about what's available for you to help with that here in ActivePipe. Um, so we're not going to talk a lot about the basics here. Um, so if you have questions about anything more specific, um, perhaps save those till the end. We'll be able to cover them together here in the Q&A section. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump right in. So on our dashboard, uh, if we're thinking about what we want to be building in our next email, um, and this is a perfect time to start thinking about this as we're in the middle of November here. We've got holiday season fast approaching. So I want to make sure we give you some really great examples uh, that are tangible and you can take away and start to implement in your own email marketing. Um, so what we're going to do right now, we're going to hop away from the dashboard and over on the left hand side of the page, we are going to go to our emails section. So when I go to select emails, what you're going to do here now uh, for those of you who are a little more new or need a refresher, this email page is going to be your personal library. Think of it as all of the emails that you've ever created, those are going to be available for you here in ActivePipe. Um, so if you've created one in the past, if you've been with us for a while, you may have an email that you've already used for a similar sort of situation. Um, you'd be able to actually reuse that here by simply going down clicking the three little ellipses, and then you'd be able to actually duplicate or preview that email that you've already used. So that's gonna be helpful for those of you who maybe have something that maybe fits about 80 to 90% of what you're looking to send. Um, this would be a great example for how to do that. And I think for most of you, that's going to be something like that monthly newsletter that maybe you've created. Um, so you can reuse those things going forward. Uh, for everyone else, or if you want to build something from scratch. Up here in the top right corner, we're simply going to select that green and white create email button. And now what this does is it opens up your template library. So these are all of the templates that your marketing team at Long & Foster has wanted you to start with. Um, so you're gonna see a number of those templates in here. They're gonna range from things like property emails, like a new listing, an open home, you're also going to have some things for newsletters as well. And there's also going to be different styles and colors. So if you prefer the all white, if you want to add in some red or blue, you're going to have a number of options there. The main thing that I want to point out is that when you go to select one of these, and let's just say we're going to create our Thanksgiving letter, we click continue. What we're gonna now do here is build out the content that we want to include. So right off the bat, you're gonna see as I scroll down into the email builder itself, um, first, our brokerage branding is automatically included. So the Long & Foster Christie's logo will be available within your email without you having to do that. Um, and then you're gonna see our email in this example starts out with a quick little text box couple things to point out here when you are thinking about content, right? So less so the property aspect of your emails and more so the text uh, and things that you're sharing with your clients. Number one, we are starting out this bit of introduction with your recipient's first name. So this is really one of the key things to talk about right off the bat is that we recommend when you're sending out something like a newsletter or maybe it's a holiday message for Thanksgiving that you include your recipient's first name. This is just a nice touch and a personalization for each of your recipients. Um, and if we're really truly doing this the right way, we're going to have all that information for our contacts anyways, right? We want to avoid sending a lot of messages to people that you haven't met or you don't, you don't really know. Um, this is going to be a really helpful way to continue for you to build strong relationships is that you're sending them a personal note by adding in things like their first name to the email. Um, so you'll see that my template already has this included. If you ever needed to add this in yourself, 
I'm just gonna clear that out. Um, you'll see at the top in our toolbar. So this is where you can adjust the font and the layout of your text. I'm gonna go all the way over to this placeholder field on the right. And I'm just gonna go down to my contact and I'm gonna select their first name. Now, when I do that, this will automatically pull in my recipient's first name. So we're just taking that information that you've either provided us in that contact profile, or for those of you who are syncing with Moxie, um, we would have that information available for your contacts as well. Um, so that's just a helpful thing to start with. You'll also notice over here on the right, we have uh, an image that's automatically included here. And this image, when I go to select it, you're gonna see that I've chosen to use my own logo. So this adds another bit of personalization as well, including my headshot um, right here in the introduction. You could choose to include uh, the Long and Foster's Christie um, logo. That's another option if you'd like. Or um, if we remove this, you could even come in over on the right and just drag, remember, drag this text column. So this single column of text. If you don't want that image or you really wanna start from scratch, you can do that by just dragging in that single column. And now you can effectively build the same thing that we look, we're looking at above. So I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna select a different text. So heading one, two, or three, yours will have distinct texts that have been selected by your marketing team. So I'm gonna say hi. And then again, we're gonna go to placeholder and I'm gonna add in my recipient's first name. And then we'll go down below. We can change the text again back to our paragraph and we can start typing out our message. So if you don't like what you see up there at the top, so in this example, again, just to reiterate, if you don't wanna have that image embedded there in the email, you can actually come down and just create your own. So very simple to do that. Um, and if you ever need to remove something, you can always use that trash can icon. So we'll select this trash can, delete, and now we're back to our main text as our introduction. Now, talking about the text that you want to include, um, right now we are pretty fortunate in that the holidays are coming up, so it makes some of these things a little easier. Um, everyone always loves to hear what's happening with you, both personally and professionally, uh, and also sharing why the holiday season perhaps is so important to you personally. So. Whether or not you wanna make this a long-winded newsletter or if you wanna keep it very short, in our example here, it's basically two sentences, um, you've got a lot of flexibility to customize that text that's being included in there. And then what you'll see at the bottom is that I'm using my own first name, last name, and phone number. So just to show you how to add those in, I'm gonna remove them. And again, we're gonna to go to our placeholder and instead of the contact section, which is up here at the top, we're gonna to go down to the user. So that's you, that's your information. So we're gonna add in your first name. We're gonna hit space. We're gonna go add in your last name. And then we're gonna add in that primary phone number again. So here we scroll down under user and find our primary phone. And again, these things are all created for you in advance. You don't have to add this information to your profile. Um, we're grabbing that stuff from Long and Foster and making it available for you. So all that stuff is preset for you in advance. Um, so that's a little bit about how you can customize here the content in the introduction. Now, some of you may not want to do that and that's totally okay. Um, there's a number of options and kind of ways that you can be creative with the content that you're including. Um, part of that, for those of you who do like to write those introductions, is using our text. Um, so we can use something like a heading, a single column or multiple columns um, for you to add in a number of text fields there. For those of you who maybe wanna do something more of a image driven, we can take our images section, whether that's a single image, multiple images um, or a different layout of those. And you can actually drag those in as well. So as an example, I can drag our image in and I'll select this camera icon in the center. Now, when I do that, this will show me all of the images that are available in my account and then any images that have been shared with me. So here's an example of some images that my team has shared into my account. 
that I'd be able to use here in active pipe. So whether it's nice fall foliage as an example, or if I toggle back to my account, I can either choose to upload images. So you do have full control of the image library that you want to use in active pipe. Um, so you just upload here in the top right and select that file file from your computer. Um, and you'll see here a quick example that I found was a little give thanks. Now time to eat pie. Um, so here's a quick little way that you can add that image into your email. And then what you can also do perhaps is add in a heading. So maybe above it, we want to drag and drop that heading in. And here we can start to customize the text, whether we want a different size. And if we want to italicize, block, anything else that you want to change about it, we can have our quick little introduction. So there's a lot of variety depending on what you're looking to send to your clients. Um, it could be either text-based, as we talked about below, um, or it could be something with images that you're automatically um, including. Now, that gets to the point of where we find these images. Um, in the example that I gave here, I actually went to a website called Unsplash, and Unsplash is basically an open source website where photographers and anyone else can add in photos. Um, all they ask is that if you're going to use them, you attribute the source there. So that's just something to be aware of. If you are grabbing images from elsewhere um, or you're creating something within Canva and pulling that in, however you want to do that, if you are accessing images from other sources, it's always good to attribute those here in your email marketing. So that's just a quick tip and a heads up. Um, so as we scroll down, you can have a combination of the two. You could remove this and it could be just a heading and a nice little introduction. And then down below, um, one of the things we spend a lot of time talking about um, is the property section. So if you're thinking of content um, and you want to share something that's driven around properties, great. Um, you absolutely have the ability to do that. We have all of your properties at Long & Foster that are available for you, so you can certainly do that. Or if you wanted to make things more um, driven around the actual content of the email and less around the properties, you can come down and there's two ways to do that. Number one, uh, we do have a video integration with both YouTube and Vimeo. So if you wanted to, what I've seen very successfully done with a number of agents across the country is that they pull in this video icon, they choose a video, and then they record a message. So whether it's about a property that you're just listing, uh, that you want to walk through virtually um, and explain the really great features about the property and why you're excited about it, um, or if it's around the holidays where you want to share a Thanksgiving message to your contacts. You can do that through both YouTube and Vimeo if you're the type that wants to record those things. So either way, you can connect your YouTube and Vimeo account to ActivePipe and you'll have access to all of your videos to scroll up and down, or you can even use the URL and copy and paste that in here. Um, so that's another example about how you can use the tools in ActivePipe, either YouTube or Vimeo, to create really engaging content with your contacts. And that's not something you have to do just around the holidays. Again, that's something you can do for any of the properties that you are listing. Um, it's a really great idea. Um, so again, I'm just going to remove this out. And then also, we have a section for the smart feed. So if you've joined us for any of our other trainings in the past, you're going to see the smart feed section. Um, it's going to look a lot like the properties where you can choose the layout. So we have a single feature. Right here, we've got a grid and we also have a list. So you've got a choice about one, the layout and two, the total number of articles that you wanna add in. So for the sake of our example today, I'm just gonna select our featured smart feed article and I'm gonna drag that in to the center. Now, when we do that, what you're gonna see here is just like the property section, you're gonna have this little icon in the lower right-hand corner. And when you select this orange and white icon, what this is going to open up is 
your personal RSS uh, blog library. So you'll see when you look in your account that the Long and Foster team has added a number of those in there for you. Uh, what you're also able to do is add your own. So an example that I like to give just to illustrate how to do this um, is that here locally in Washington, DC, I like to share or know, understand what's happening from a neighborhood perspective um, and a restaurant, the restaurant scene. So I'm just gonna take this website. So you see DC Eater, um, and I'm gonna take the URL at the top of the page. I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna come in to Active Pipe. And underneath this section for fetch from URL, I'm gonna paste in that URL. So dc.eater.com. I'm gonna hit enter. And when I do that, Active Pipe's gonna be able to add that uh, and make these articles accessible. So if I wanted to share something that's happening um, around the district, I can do that by just taking one of those URLs. Um, so a couple examples here might be a good one. A lot of people um, have been coming to the city post-election and they'll continue to do that through the end of the year and beginning of 21. Um, so we can say where to eat around the National Mall in DC might be a good one. Um, or if they have some content around what you can take away um, for Thanksgiving this year, those would be good ones as well. So we can take any of these articles, click to add them in, and this article now is available for you to use here within ActivePipe. Uh, anytime someone clicks on it, they click on the image or they click on the button below, that's going to redirect them to the full article at dceater.com. Um, so that's really exciting. You'll notice a couple presets in your account that you'll be able to utilize. Um, but if you have questions or if you're trying to see does this specific website have the ability, um, again, all you need to do is take that URL at the top and test it out in Active Pipe. So we take that, copy it, we drag in our feature, and again, just to reiterate, we'll select that orange and white house, orange and white icon, and then fetch from URL in the top right corner. So we paste that in, hit enter, and that'll make that available. Now, one last step is that if you want to save this for future use, there's a little handy add to favorites. So this will actually add DC Eater to your account. So here we can see I've saved this now underneath my favorites. So that's available for me to reuse. Now, that's the first thing. So if you wanna go out there and kind of test some websites and see if those work, um, that's a great way to do it. Again, those websites will need to be what's called RSS, Real Syndication. Um, they will need to be accessible in that format. You'll see that right here, this RSS in the URL. That's just one caveat. We won't be able to pull every single website and make those articles available. Um, so that's just something for you to be aware of. Also on the flip side, if you're using something like the Washington Post, that website um, has a subscription paywall. So while you may subscribe to the Washington Post, and you want to share something from the real estate lifestyle or living sections, um, your recipients, your contacts may not have a subscription to the Washington Post. So they might not be able to access that article that you share. So that's just something for you to be aware of when you're thinking about what kind of external resources you want to include in your emails. Um, now, on the flip side, for those of you who are looking for something a little more pre-built. Um, we have an exciting new feature that's live here in ActivePipe. It's called real estate content. So it's an add-on to your account. And what real estate content would allow you to do is take an entire library of about 120 real estate specific articles that have been pre-built here for the US market. Um, and we can actually choose things based off of whether or not your recipients are looking to find more space in the home, or maybe they're looking to downsize and move out of the city, um, or perhaps they're looking as a first time home buyer, or they need some finance tips on getting a loan. There's a lot of different pieces of content that you can use in here. Um, so an example might be, we'll select our first time home buyers, and here are some great examples 
um, that'll help people line up their finances uh, before purchasing it or helping them find that great buyer's agent. So we can select one of these articles. It'll automatically pull in to your account. And when we go to select preview and we view that preview, not only will we be able to see this great content that you've put together, uh, but also down below, here are our six tips. And this is our article. When someone clicks on either the image or the button, they're going to be redirected to a Long and Foster landing page that's branded to you as the agent. So instead of us um, diverting someone to an external source like DC Eater, as an example, um, these bits of content are actually going to keep all that branding, everything internal. We're directing those people back to you as the agent. So you can imagine if you've got a really strong pipeline of first time home buyers, this would be a great way to engage them, not only with properties, but also with some tips in finding that great buyer's agent, which is hopefully you, um, or things to consider from a finance perspective when you're looking to buy that new home. So now down below, here's the article. You can see what it looks like. Your image and your contact information will be right here. So if someone does click on it and they said, you know what? Yeah, like this, this checks all the boxes. I wanna talk to this person. They've got all of your information right here to easily get in touch with you. Uh, so again, this is an add-on to your account. It would be an additional $10 per month. Um, and I'll drop in a quick link if you would like to get started or if you have questions about this, um, here you go in the chat box, um, drop this. You can always click in here, save this bookmark it. There's a quick little video that walks you through it, uh, maybe in a little more detail and then a link to speak to the customer success team um, to see if this would be a good fit for what you're trying to do with your content. Uh, but again, that's something external. You can always continue to add in your own RSS feeds um, and add those personal touches to your campaigns. Now, finally, after we've previewed this, again, the last thing that we're going to do, we're gonna add in a subject line. In the subject line, we do also support emojis. So we can right click, we can search for a pumpkin, we can search for a leaf, a nice leaf. And so here we have a nice little engaging subject line that we've included with our text and our emoji. We can click save in the top right hand corner. And now the last step would be to quick send. So we're going to choose who we want this email to go out to. Again, this could be um, entire audiences so we can browse and we can choose a tag. So it could be our first time home buyers. Uh, more likely it's going to be something like your sphere. So the people that you're very close with that refer you to new clients and new business. Um, so we can click apply. And now we've chosen those two groups. We can also choose individuals. So if you want this delivered um, to an individual person, you can do that. So we've got a lot of flexibility to make sure that the content that you're building, you're writing, um, can be delivered to the right people. The one thing that I would recommend is to avoid sending things to all contacts. Um, maybe around the holidays when you're talking about a Thanksgiving message or Happy New Year's, those would be things that you could perhaps send to all of the contacts in your account. But if you are including anything property related um, or anything content related to property, those would be ones where I would choose wisely um, the groups of people that you want to deliver that to so you can ensure that your message is hitting that inbox and that people are actually opening it and engaging with it. Um, and then finally, once you do have those groups set up or individuals, you just choose when this email goes out. So whether it's immediately or if we want to set this up for 9 a.m. And we can do it the day before. So I believe it's the 26th this year. So we can set it out on Wednesday, November the 25th. And that will go out the door. I think that's the date. Could be wrong. Could be the 19th this year. Um, anyways, so you'd send that and you'd be out the door and now you're good. You don't have to worry about that campaign. It's preset to go out on that date to your recipients. And now you can focus on other tasks like helping your clients buy and sell their next home. Um, with that being said, I want to open the floor to questions. It looks like we've got a couple um, questions in here. So one quick one, 
right off the bat. Can we see a proof before we launch the email? Um, yes, yes, Marie Jesse, um, you absolutely can. Um, if you go into the preview button in the top right corner, this will allow you to preview that email so you can choose to view it in app or you can send yourself a preview to your inbox. So if I go to view preview, here's what my email is going to look like on both a desktop and a mobile device. So you can toggle back and forth between the two. Um, let's see here. You know, Jeff, that's a good question. Uh, Jeff's asking, can you replace the Long and Foster Christie's logo with a personal logo? Um, it depends. I don't know if all of the email templates in your accounts, Jeff, are unlocked. Um, I think they may be locked. So if you go and hover over it, you'll see if you see this little locked icon in the top right, you won't be able to actually remove that but that doesn't mean you can't add your own. So you'd have the ability to add in a logo. And so you can customize this so we can change it. Um, and now you can actually upload your own logo right here. So that would be another option. Okay, so let's see what other questions we have. Yeah, uh, Paula asks, after the reader goes to the external site to read an article, are they automatically returned to your active pipe mailing? Um, Paul, that's a good question. Um, no, at this point, they would be redirected to that site externally, um, and then they would be able to navigate back to Active Pipe if they would like. But it wouldn't close down that email. It simply opens it up into a new window, so they'd be able to go back to your email once they're done reading it. Um, Amy's asking, how do we access images from sources other than Canva or Unsplash? For example, um, other photo sources or even our own personal photos we want to use. Um, Amy, if you have those photos or files on your computer, when you go to upload any images, you can choose any of those folders on your computer. You can choose the desktop, the download section. So if you have those on your personal device or an external hard drive, you'd be able to access those when you're importing or adding photos. Um, yeah, and if you do have any questions, there's obviously going to be some that we have after today. Um, one of the things that I would recommend is to bookmark our support site. That is support.activepipe.com. So you'll see right here, I have this and I'll drop this into the chat box. That's going to be a great resource for you. We've got helpful things to get started, um, entire knowledge base of articles, and we even have short training videos. So if you're wondering um, how to use YouTube, here we can talk through um, adding in or updating a YouTube video into your account. So just type that in and we'll have an entire article that walks you through exactly how to do that. Okay, let's see a couple other, time for about two more questions. Um, okay, so we've got two of the same ones and one unique. So these will be the last two. So um, we've got one question from Patrick. If someone's tagged in multiple groups, does ActivePipe know not to send duplicates? Yes. Um, so in the example, Patrick, that we kind of talked through when we were sending out that email. So I'll save this and click quick send. When I go to choose my two groups that are first time home buyers and buyers, we click apply. If um, this one person who's a first time home buyer is also categorized as a buyer, we will only send them one email. So that person's only going to receive one email from you. Now, that being said, if you sent this email right now to your first time home buyer and click send, and then you came back in and you said, I want to send it to my buyers too. If you did two separate sends, that person would then receive two emails from you. But as long as you're including each of those categories in a single email, we're going to dedupe that for you. So that'll be helpful. Um, and then the final question is, can you post these things to social media? Um, yes. Anytime you do, you'll go to, I believe yours is going to say sends. But in my demo account, this says campaigns. We'll go to our campaigns. We'll click a finished campaign. 
we're going to view that report. And then you can view the email. So right here, local links next to the name, there's a view email button. We'll click that and you can actually take this URL and you can copy and paste that to any social media site. Um, so that will be a quick way to be able to do it. We are looking um, at a better way to be able to handle that in the future. But for now, that's going to be your best resource to share those final finished campaigns to social media. Um, but yeah, so we are a couple minutes after 1.30 here. So in the interest of time, I want to wrap things up today. Um, I truly want to appreciate everyone taking 30 minutes out of your afternoon here in the middle of the week. I uh, hope you learned a little bit of something new about how you can approach your email marketing here in ActivePipe. Uh, if you have any questions whatsoever, I highly recommend bookmarking that support page. It's going to have all the resources you'll ever need. But also, if you ever run into questions while you're kind of working on something in the app, in the lower right or lower left-hand corner, you'll see this help icon. You can actually chat live with our support team in the app. Uh, they're very responsive and be able to help you get your question addressed really quickly and provide some great suggestions. So if you ever want to do that, that is available for you. Otherwise, you can also email our support team. And that is, and I'll drop it into the chat box as well. That's support at activepipe.com. They'll be able to help get your questions addressed as well. So a lot of great resources there. Um, but again, I want to thank you all so much for joining us this afternoon. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of the day. Um, and if I don't see on any future active life trainings, hopefully everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving. Take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.